What can I disable in Task Manager's startup list? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button down below, hit the thumbs up button, like this video. Both of those things will not only help you see future videos that I put out, but also help other people find the answers that they're looking for as they're searching YouTube. So here's a question. When I look at Task Manager's Startup tab, I get a really long list of things I don't understand. What's what? How can I find out which ones are safe to turn off? Here's the list of what it shows right now. Maybe you can tell me. I probably can't, but the problem, of course, is that everybody's list is ever so slightly different. Which programs start automatically depend on your hardware, your software, some choices you've made, and more. What we'll do is take a look at a startup list on one of my machines and examine what are the kinds of things that might factor into deciding what to disable and what not. So let's have a look at Windows 10. This is my Windows 10 home machine. I'm going to right click on the clock and hit Task Manager. That's my favorite way to start it. If you ended up with um, a Task Manager that looks like this, be sure and hit more details to get the full version. That's the version that has the startup tab present in it. So here you'll find a few interesting items listed as starting automatically every time I run my machine. Cortana, Microsoft OneDrive. I have no idea what this program is. Skype, the VirtualBox Guest Editions. I'll talk about that in a second, and Windows security notifications. Your list will almost definitely be different than mine. This is the startup tab for a relatively clean machine. This is my example machine that I use for a lot of different demo videos and answers. If, however, I were to show you my quote unquote real machine, the machine that I actually use to do all this recording and for my day to day work, well, let me bring that startup tab in. Here you can see that I have lots and lots and lots of things that are listed in the startup tab for my personal machine. There's a ton. Some of it, yeah, it's there for a reason. It needs to be there. Some of it, not so much. Let's go back to our simpler example and we'll walk through the process that I use when I take a look at the various things that show up in the startup tab. Let's walk through this list. Cortana, I think we all know what Cortana is. That's the software that tries to act as a halfway intelligent assistant. Most people don't use it. Most people don't even like it. And as you can see, I have it disabled. This one turns into a personal choice. To enable or disable an item that's in this list, you would right click on it and this would either be enable or disable. You can easily disable Cortana just by right clicking on it. And if it said disable, clicking on that. Microsoft OneDrive. I use OneDrive. I use this machine's OneDrive for examples of OneDrive all the time. So that's something that I'll leave enabled. You can see here another interesting piece of data that Microsoft tries to give you some concept of what this item's impact is on your startup. If it's a high item, then you may want to consider whether or not it's something you really need. I really need OneDrive, so I choose to leave it alone. If it's a low item or if it's not measured, then maybe it's not worth playing around with. The next one here is this thing called program. Like I said, I have no idea what it is and I have no idea how to figure out what it is. I will talk about ways to figure out what this is in a moment, but ultimately it's not something that's going to be addressed. My strong advice is if there is something in the startup group that is enabled and you can't figure out exactly what it is, it's probably best to just leave it alone. Skype. I don't use Skype on this machine, so I have that disabled as a startup item. Virtual guest additions. That is because what you're actually looking at is a virtual machine. That's how I was able to bring in my real machines task manager a few minutes ago. 
This is software that's provided by the VirtualBox folks that run in the VirtualBox as an application, as a startup device. It is something that I leave running all the time, but it's a great example of one of the things you can do to try and figure out what things are. If you right click on it, you'll notice that there is this option to search online. Searching online for this item gives us an answer. What is vboxtray.exe? And there's an answer describing exactly what this item is. You can then use that as additional data to determine whether or not it's something you want to keep. And finally, on this list is Windows security notifications. This is something that, of course, I do want to keep. It is part of the security software on your machine. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it's listed here as being an option to disable it at all. It's not something that I necessarily would ever want to see disabled, except perhaps if this machine were being used for some single purpose, dedicated task um, in an automated fashion. But that's, that's all I can really think of. One other piece of data that may help you understand what something might represent, what something that you're not sure of in your startup list might be, is we saw the search online, but another one is to open file location. That actually shows the program that's being run automatically in the folder in which it resides. So in this case, it's not really telling us a whole lot. Installation for this particular tool put it in Windows System 32. But in other cases, for other installed software, you may find that the file location will also give you an important clue as to exactly where that startup item came from and whether or not it's something you want to leave in place. The ultimate question we're trying to answer here for each of these items is, do I need it? Can I disable it? And unfortunately, that's not a question I can answer for you. The problem is that, as I said at the beginning, every system is different. How you use your computer, what your hardware requires, how your system is configured, even what kind of options you've selected in some of the applications you use may all have an impact on not only what appears in the startup tab, but what you want to appear in the startup tab, what you want to have running every time you run Windows. As you saw, my personal machine has a very lengthy list of things that start when I start my machine. Those are on purpose. They are there. Those are decisions that I've made because those are all tools that I use or things that I need. But it all varies depending on exactly how you use your machine and what you have installed. Now, I do want to say that when it comes to starting up, Task Manager's Startup tab is perhaps the safest and the simplest, but it is only the beginning. It's very difficult to actually hurt your machine by disabling something in the Startup tab. Uh, it's something that you can usually easily recover from simply by going back to the Startup tab and re-enabling whatever it is you disabled if you find that your system starts misbehaving. I'm going to show you a different tool that will expose much, much more about what happens at Windows Startup. This tool will allow you to completely disable your machine if you don't use it properly. So with that as a very huge caveat, take a quick look at auto runs. I'm going to close the task manager. We're not going to need it right now, and I'm going to fire up my browser. I'm simply searching for auto runs because that's the name of a tool that you can get from Windows Sys Internals. Uh, it is uh, auto runs and auto runs SC. Uh, it's a zip file, which I'm going to open. And you can see that there are multiple copies of the program here. We can't run directly from a zip, so I'm going to copy it to a temporary folder for the moment. Go ahead and actually take all of it. Just copy it to T. Close that. Close the browser. We don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to run auto runs.exe. You may find that you'll be asked to confirm a uh, license for systems, sys internal software the first time you run it. Obviously, I've run it before. Uh, it's just a simple uh, licensing term. So here is everything. This tab right here shows you absolutely everything that starts when you start Windows. It's a lot. It really is. 
And it shows up in various different places by being in particular folders, by being in various registry keys. And it's not something that you necessarily want to be playing with. But when you are diagnosing potentially a startup problem, it is another source of information that you can use to determine exactly what it is that's starting up every time you start your machine. Ultimately, the question you really have to ask yourself is, is this all worth it? Is all of this research we're doing to maybe try and get things down to a quote unquote absolute bare minimum really worth it? Obviously, I can't answer that for you. I don't know what the state of your system is. My approach generally is to use the startup tab in Task Manager, make a few intelligent decisions based on how I use my machine and what the impact is of some of those startup items and leave everything else alone. Generally, it's not that critical. The other advice I have for you, uninstall software you're not using. That will generally also uninstall anything that started automatically when you sign into Windows. But once you've done that, if your system is still slow, we really need to look at more traditional ways to improve your performance. That might include replacing a traditional hard drive with a solid state drive, defrag that older hard drive, maybe add RAM if your system is on the edge of RAM. My general rule of thumb, though, is that aside from any, I'll call it low hanging fruit that you might find in the startup tab of Task Manager, it's probably not worth the time and energy to go digging any deeper than that to try and improve your startup time. Hopefully this was helpful. For the original article on which this video was based, which will include any updates, links to related articles, as well as user comments, visit askleo.com 2633. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.